We back in this thing. Hey, T. Lay. Hey, you dicey. How are you doing? Let me stop real quick and address something. Okay. I need to address the room. Mm. Samo. What up? Ernest. Hey. I say Ernest. I say big money eat. <laughs> I say the boy got money. Where you at? Eat. Well, he is not here today, but he is en route. We got Simon holding this thing down. The goddamn show will go on. People, this is the Digital Miss Me podcast, the number one storytelling podcast in the game. We got guests today. You're familiar with my face. I'm D-Lay. We got some guests, and we're going to let them walk themselves into it as the show progresses. Dicey. Yes. Real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Dicey was on a live show with us in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And shit was very interesting in Dallas the whole mm -hmm. time. If you know anything about us, the three two three years and the ninety six Bulls, we play zero games. <laughs> we play night. Listen to me, Brittany. She's about to find out about the ninety six Bulls today on this episode. We glad to be here. I'm glad, fellas. And listen, fellas, ladies. Normally I'm drinking. I'm smoking on these right here, but I was coerced. She made me do it. I didn't want to do this shit. She got me on backwoods. Well, I'm co-hosting the Dicey. Day, so. so goddamn it, we're doing what Dicey doing. Dicey, really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having for me. coming through. And you were telling us before we started airing that at that live show, we we went pretty, pretty hard on your, your relatives that were at the show. You did. Yeah. Because no. Dallas is my hometown. I call myself, you know, inviting my family out. What? What? Give us what your family said. Y'all niggas embarrassed the shit out of me. Okay. 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 First of all, I'm back there getting fucked up with, with Courtney, with Coco in the green room. That's right. And y'all up there, my sister, you know, she don't take, she don't send her, her baby to like a regular daycare or nothing like that. It's a lady that watched the baby. She watched like five of the kids at the house. Okay. And her husband was so there. So it's not a real daycare? It's I just mean, kids there. Whatever. <laughs> okay. During the day and she cares for them. I ain't telling so nobody in trouble. She's being taken care of. Ain't nobody getting hurt. Go ahead, Dicey. So he does resemble George Washington Carver. I ain't gonna lie. That made the peanut. I called a nigga George Washington Carver. He looked like him. Google it right now. And he was trying to fuck Some of the my millennials. <laughs> well, so, I don't think there's a surprise. Before he knew that it was my mother. I didn't know it was her mama. And let me just share something real quick. I did not know it was her mama. Her mama is very attractive. Black don't crack, but it get ashy. If you a mother out there, <laughs> and you trying to get your groove back, if you watching the movie How Stella Got Her Groove Back, if you find yourself wondering what is it like to get some young meat again, plant-based dick, give us a call. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. You goddamn it, you hold tight. Somebody's in route. Go ahead, Dicey. George I just Washington realized call. that that was Billy's phone number. It's a real which goddamn is crazy number. Crazy as hell. <laughs> but anyway, so now my my the other people in my family can't even go in to pick up my niece because he's always in there on the couch. The dude they call George Washington Carver, and they want to just laugh in his face every time. Because they think about his name being George. Because y'all y'all made mention to that the whole fucking show. So he did he not look like George Washington no, Carver? No, okay, he does. Simo, he, he do. We, you know what? <laughs> I was about to say because we don't have his picture. I was about to say we can get a picture and do the split screen <laughs> yeah. and pour. It's your uncle, your no, dad. No, he's stepdad. He, babysitter's husband. What? My sister. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. He fucking somebody. <laughs> Who is George Washington Carver fucking? Let's talk about it. He's Let's talk about it. The babysitter. The babysitter. He's fucking the babysitter. Yeah. You left that out. Okay. You left that out. You was trying to leave us out on your secrets. Not here. We got to have it. We got to have it. Now, what's George Washington's real name? I don't know his real name, but now he's George Washington Carver. God damn it, we're going to roll with George Washington Carver. <laughs> That's who he is. We had some interesting times in Dallas. That we're going to be talking about that a little later. Very, very interesting times. Um, yes. We've discussed the fight that Billy had with his uh, yes. with his wife, with yes. Courtney. I got to give my side, okay? Because I was one of the only bitches up in the house at that time. <sighs> and I just have to give my side. Of, you know, from a domestic violence standpoint, it's not what you think. Well, go ahead. Elaborate do you on wanna, it. Do you want to Let me set it up, and I'm going to walk you into what you heard. Now, Billy's room, we're in an Airbnb. We got this big four or five bedroom home, and we're wilding. They didn't have a chef to come through. Oh, cooking And make up. two or three days worth of shit, right? Man, all kind of shit. All pescatarian shit. It was... A vegan cake. Which is, I'm pescatarian, so I, I really we appreciated are. that, because people never... 
keep me in mind. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially yeah. on the road. They fuck over you on the road. They fuck over they me. They fuck you on the road. But, but y'all really took good care of me. We and did. And when I was with y'all and Bill Bellamy, y'all took care of me too. You were the. F you know what? I just you made me think about something. We had this thing called the Ladies Now Tour. If you go check it out on Showtime, me, Bill Bellamy, Ali Sadiq, who's a friend of the podcast, and Jay Reed, also a friend of the podcast. Um, we did a show called Late, The Ladies Now Tour, aired on, on Showtime, and we started doing tours. And we would do tours, and people would get guest spots. Hey, man, let me get a guest spot. And they would go up on stage in the guest spot, and they would eat a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Simon, you know I was loving it. Oh, yeah. You I was fucking it. loving it. <laughs> Seen that loving it. And it would be like some new comedians, and then like I would be hosting, so they would usually, usually go right behind me. Mm -hmm. I would go set that bitch on fire. And be like, hey, young nigga, your turn. And they would go in there and usually eat a dick. We're in San Diego. I still remember. We're in San Diego at the American Comedy Club, and we're doing a Ladies Now tour. Dicey hit me up, and I was like, that's right, Dicey. This is dope. Because we don't be thinking about guest spots because the niggas be bombing. And, and then Jay Reed was also like a big part of that. Yes. 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 Dicey came through that bitch and ripped. Was the first woman to ever do a weekend with us and stood her goddamn ground. The whole weekend. So congratulations That's because that. Bill Bellamy told me. He said, hey, you cute and stuff, but if you ain't funny, your bag is going to be sitting outside the green room when so it's over. <laughs> and he was so serious. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God. I got to be so funny. And then afterwards, I was ready to go back to my room. Now, mind you, it was like 20 bitches that walked across the street because we were staying at the Andes. Mm -hmm. 20 bitches walked across the street That's following right. y'all right. in the elevator. That's right. It was 20. And I was like, good night. And Bill said, uh, where are you going? If you're going to be on tour with us, you coming to you the party, with party, us. party, man. You got a party with us. You're coming. What are you talking about? You got a party with us. And let me tell you something. Hold up. All the fit. Y'all going to like this. That's the night. Fuck it. That's the night. I think I talked about it on the podcast, but I'm going to just sprinkle it. And Simon, you stop me if I did. All right. Um, I had a Middle Eastern girl. I was just getting, I was just getting separated. My heart was broken. Mm. I was hurt. From a Middle Eastern bitch? No. No. Oh, mm -mm. She was the comforter. She or had so ass. I thought. Oh, okay. Of course she had ass. So, we're at that weekend, this Middle Eastern girl comes up to me. She was like, hey, what are you doing afterwards? I was like, oh, we got an after party. She was like, I'm partying with you. I was like, oh, who you with? She was like, I got my own girl. It's her birthday. I'm like, okay. Okay, cool. So, we go to the after party. We're hanging out. Uh, Lorenz Tate is with us. Lorenz, oh, yeah. Lorenz is with us. He was like, man, what's going on? I was like, man, I'm going to get wild tonight. You know what I'm going through. My heart is hurting. <laughs> I'm about to get wild. So we were in there drinking, and there was another girl in San Diego that came out to see me. But at this point, I was really focused on these two. They were good-looking girls. These mm -hmm. two. Okay. These, these two. Mm -hmm. a Middle Eastern girl and a black girl. I remember the black girl, she had short hair. Don't know her name, fellas. I, I wish I could. I ain't got it. I don't know her name. I don't know the Middle Eastern girl. I don't know the Middle Eastern girl. I don't know her name. But they're very comforting. I'm hurt. So we're taking shots. Neat. We're shooting the shit out of these shots. Mm -hmm. Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to the head. Mm -hmm. Y'all got, y'all got, we five in. Mm -hmm. We lit. Keep in mind, we've been drinking at the show. We was drinking at the show. In between my set, I'm hosting. Y'all got. So I'm probably about seven, eight shots in. And I'm having a great time. Mm -hmm. You know why I'm having a great time? Because my heart is hurt. <laughs> I'm hurting. I am in the club about an hour. I tell LT, I said, LT, I'm going to get up out of here. I'm just let you know where I'm going. He was like, oh, okay. Oh, you taking him to? Absolutely, I'm taking him to. You know why I'm taking him to? Mm -hmm. Because my heart is hurting. <laughs> I got a hurt heart. So we go back to the hotel, and the girls are like bubbly. You know what I mean? They lit. Making them, they lit. Now, the Middle Eastern girl is on one. She's like, I want to keep partying. You got music? I'm like, I got a phone and a goddamn speaker in my room. Yep, I got music. Got on. We, got a, we got the after after party. Let's go. We go into the hotel. I'm going to tell you where we at. You know where we at, E? I mean, uh, Simo? Where you at? The St. Andes. Mm -hmm. Either the Andes or the St. Andes. It's a nice ass hotel. It's motherfucking nice. So go in there. I got a nice room. Shit, nice. I'm feeling good. I got two winners with me. They in party mode. We all know what it is. I need this. My heart is hurting. So we get in the room, and they were like, yeah, this is nice. You know, they go in, they press the, mm, I ain't got no pull your shit to the side curtains. I got, mm, I got them bitches. That's what I got. 
So they and they playing with the shit. They're like, oh my God, you got some drink. I was like, put it on the hotel. My heart hurt. We paying for this high ass shit tonight. I said, listen, I'm gonna go get in the shower, get my shower on. Cause I just had two shows. I ain't finna throw this dick in you like this with two shows. That's really <laughs> You gonna knock that club off. Get the club and the show off me. I got show and club dick. I ain't gonna give you that. And I know y'all want that. Cause it's sweaty. Cause y'all be sweating yeah. up there. And guess what? First of all, they were at first the, the, the seven o'clock show. Went to the next show, the 930 show, and then and hanging out at the after party. So now I'm in there, I'm taking a shower, and the music is playing. I'm feeling good. I'm like, this shit about to go down. It's all. I need this. My heart is hurting. I finish showering. <laughs> get out the shower. I just got the towel around. You know, I just got the towel around. I ain't, I didn't get all the way dry. You got to leave some of that. Let some of the, the water beat off your body. So the water beating off your body. I want them to take it in. I want them to take it in. They need to see this. Mm -hmm. I walk out the door. As I walk out the door, the girls are standing, you know, with their back to me, you know, standing by the table. Looked over. They got cocaine. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sitting on the table, and it's, it's and I was like, "Hey, what's this? Oh, don't worry, we save you some, bitch. That's not the point. Why you got cocaine in there? <laughs> you shouldn't have cocaine in there. It's just cocaine." And it kind of threw me off. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm kind of turned off." But my heart is hurting, so I need this night. So they do their cocaine, and I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this." The Middle Eastern girl is she getting it I'm in. Just, I'm surprised cocaine offends you, but anyway, yeah. let's. It, did, it offended me then. Okay. It offended me then. Oh, I don't care about Change. it now. I've changed. <laughs> I don't do it. Let's be clear. We got the I Coke Boys for that. Let's. I gotta always clarify that because I hang with the Coke Boys. Yeah. Billy Sorrells and Damn Fool are the Coke Boys. Yes. So I automatically kind of get tied into it and they'll be like, he doing cocaine too? I have not done cocaine, and I'm proud to say it. I like to say. It. You know what I like? I like to tell my boys, my sons. Your daddy ain't never did cocaine. Yeah. That's just, you should be able to say that for me. So I see them doing the cocaine. I'm like, uh, 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 I don't want to fuck with this. But I went and did it because my heart was hurting and I had a good night. And if you subscribe to Patreon, I can tell you the details oh. of that night. That's right. Well, I need you to subscribe to Patreon. Yeah. That's why Patreon subscribers. I need you to subscribe to get the real details. Y'all thought I was going to give you everything right then? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh-uh. Nah, go on over to Patreon. The is going to be out. When we dropping it, uh, Simon, when we going to drop it? Two days after this episode drops. Two days? Two days. After this episode's drop? Yeah. You get the details of the night at the St. Andes with D-Lay. That's what I'm All I know was I was on the roof with y'all. Yes. Smoking, and it was like two God bottles damn, of champagne. Goddamn, that's right. We were and, on the and roof. And Bill popped that bottle. He said, "Ooh, that's the sound of success." Mm. <laughs> and I have never forgot that. And every time I, I pop that. a bottle to this day, I'm like, "Ooh, that's the sound of, of success." success. Mm. It is. It is. Can we? Can we introduce my home? Actually, again? we absolutely can. We have somebody that's uh, going to be getting getting you guys some um, some insight on how ladies move. And uh, it's coming straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, <laughs> give her a little bit about yourself. Straight from the hose mouth. Can I, can I introduce her? <laughs> Walk her into it, Dicey. Me, okay, so. Walk her in, Dicey. So let me introduce her. This is my homegirl right here. Uh, can you light that? Because, you know, you, okay. you handed it to me and it wasn't lit. Okay. Um, her name is Brittany, a.k.a. White Brittany, because mm -hmm. we have a black Brittany already. So hey. Talking um, talk Brittany. Mm-hmm. With none. Uh, uh, a.k.a. Talking Brittany. Right. Um, <laughs> But me and this bitch right here, it's like we, have you ever had a friend that you feel like you've known for like at least three or four lifetimes or something like, y'all just mm -hmm. click right when you meet them? Mm -hmm. This is her. This is like, she has spoiled me. I feel like our friendship is, you know how you have like a bunch of fucked up ass friendships and then she's like the good karma for how good of a friend I've been to mm -hmm. people. That's how I feel yeah, about you. I feel mm. the same way about you. I really do. Yeah. So, um. Like we deserve each other. We do. Yeah. We worked hard. We're, we were some hoes. <clears throat> we were some hoes. I'm a retired hoe. I'm like in hospice. We're both married. Where, now. Hoes, go to, <laughs> where hoes go to die. <laughs> where hoes go to die. Yeah. Fucking hoes, hilarious. Fucking hoes. Fucking hilarious. One day we went to sushi. Actually, it was our first time ever, ever like going out together. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the meal, this bitch tells me that she has an idea to do a hoe bag. And I have a joke about what's in your hoe bag. It's called what's in your hoe bag, and I talk about what's in these bitches' hoe bags, right? right. Mm. And so we were going to shoot a show that Sunday. 
called What's in Your Ho Bag. Mm. And it's, we basically rented a van and we rode around with like six bitches and found out what was in their ho bags and we're dropping them off. So it's like the That's Uber dope. for hoes. Mm -hmm. oh, I like that. And she was else. like, she didn't even believe me. She thought I was trying to steal her idea. No, right. I didn't. Well, I mean, you looked at me like, bitch, no, wait, hold on. This can't be this much of a coincidence that we're both on some hoe shit. Right, yeah. right. And so, long story short, we just partnered up, mm -hmm. and we're doing hoe bags together. Mm -hmm. You had a joke about a hoe bag. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You had, had a hoe bag. Business, yeah. These yeah. hoes hooked up, and these hoes are supposed to be together. And we were gonna make hoe bags, but my shit wasn't gonna look like this. But well, look at it now. It wasn't gonna look like this with this that packaging, with all of this that, shit. Like, if I was a hoe, I'd get it. If I was a hoe, I would get it. Yeah. So I, okay, so let me just thing? introduce her. Go for it. Mm, this is you. Brittany Ratowski. Did I say your last Ritowski. name? Ritowski. Yeah, I mean, she's Italian. Schmidt. I mean, it's some white shit. Schmidt. No, she's Italian. She goes by well. What Unless you married into that name. Did you marry into I that name? I married into Rutkowski. I'm Brittany Schmidt. Rutkowski. Rutkowski. Whatever. It's way too much. Polish? Yeah. Rutkowski. What? Look at this Schmidt nigga German. who's been around the world, around like, the globe. Grunkowski. He, he yeah. knows from Grunk, okay, Grunk, Grunk, Grunkowski. Grunk. Uh-oh. Should I close that? No, you did. Okay. Um, so anyway, Brittany, tell us about the hoe bag in your words. Can you read that shit too? Yeah. Like, so the hoe bag is like everything you need to not ever do the walk of shame again. It's like last night is nobody's business but your own. Um, so let's keep it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's flip flops, leggings, t-shirts, sunglasses, hair tie, toothbrush, toothpaste, mm -hmm. makeup wipe, deodorant wipe. <laughs> so you're not like a stanky bitch in the morning, mm -hmm. you know? And then there's a tote to put your heels in because like Way too many times I've walked home at like eight in the morning with right. just like fucked out. With hoes got to be comfortable. Hose yeah, hoes got to be discreet. Hoes, mm -hmm. you know, yes. it's not everyone's you business who you fucked last night. With dignity, bitch. Yeah. The next right. morning. There's yeah. one yeah. thing everyone wants to know. Yeah. Was Chris Brown telling the truth? What did he say? Are these hoes loyal? Please. Mm. Now, because you coming from two hoes. Coming so from two hoes. I, you gotta have that. You gotta I'm have that. loyal now because I hoed so hard. Uh, like, hoed so hoed hard, so motherfuckers so can't find me. <laughs> I hoed so hard. Like, my life was like a ball pit of dicks and I, I played in it. If you, you were know? to guess, if you were guessing, uh, see, because yeah. our audience yeah. wanna know this. Yeah. If you were guessing, and we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna stick yeah. to the numbers, we yeah, gotta yeah. give us a number. Yeah. This is how the show yeah. goes. I know you don't know about it, but like, if we ask you a question, we just want real answers. Yeah. yeah. About how many dicks you think you've consumed? I stopped counting after 100. A hundred dicks. Now, wait a minute. When did you stop counting? At what age? A long, long time ago. <laughs> what age did you start? I started sex? counting when I started having sex. And then At I stopped what age count, was that? Uh, like 15. 15. Okay, and you started hoeing late. Yeah, that's I guess, that's a late yeah, I guess that's late. But you grew into your hoe. You, you grew into your hoe. You was really late. You had yeah, to develop you were 19? You had a lot of catching up to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you stopped counting at 100? Yeah. And that was like in 2008. If you were just taking a stab at it, if you were just guessing, yeah. give me a number. Just a a ballpark figure. Yeah, man, probably 200. 200 dicks? Plus, yeah. Plus, plus what? Plus some vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> this is the type of honesty we love. They're uh -huh. gonna love you. Yeah. They are gonna love you. Ladies, listen. She's telling you her truth. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna get mad? You can't hold it against oh, really? her. She told you first, bitch. She is an honest former hoe. Mm -hmm. Damn. Let's do some numbers though right quick. Okay. If a bitch don't have a boyfriend, and you're trying to justify the dicks. I see you trying to justify no, the dicks. I'm not, but just say you're trying to justify these dicks. My numbers, Go ahead, girl. justify the dicks. Go ahead, I'm going to give you a dick justification. Okay, Simon, would you say that fucking five people a year is a lot? No. 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 So I said if, no. if a woman fucks one person a month, that's not bad. No. Well, it what? depends on what you a do month. for a living. A month? Yeah. How many if you, low. If you're single, that's low, I think. If you in the church. You gotta wave the water. the one right here. If you in the church. You gotta test it out, right? And you getting a dick a month. And you're in the church. That's too many dicks for a church girl. So it depends on what your lifestyle is. If you're a church girl, 12 dicks a year is too many church dicks. Church girls be taking church girls for church taking girls the most Don't be wearing dicks. draws with they little. You know what yeah. too many dicks? For a teacher. If you're a teacher and you're only getting one a month, that's Shame low. Shame. Shame. That's low. Shame. Shame. Teachers are the biggest hoes out here. Teachers are some hoes. So I think we're about all 300 hoes. dicks? No. You just opted by a hundred. Why do you always want to multiply that number? That's so fucked up. Just wanted to know. Why do you always want to multiply it? You think we're lying? She said two hundred. You don't think? You because think I, we've never had a. That's we've, a lot. We've never had a, a dick. Uh, we've it's never been a long time before you, you got somebody that was really honest about it. That's yeah. honest, and we've and never she had got a, a husband. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So, 
So you can, if you're a hoe out there. You can do it. And yeah. what you're doing is you're prepping yourself mm -hmm. for your m Mrs. Bronkowski. Yeah. <laughs> Not my name. <laughs> What's Good. This you need an alien. Sounds Brunkowski? like you need an alien. What is it? It's, Brunkowski. it's Brittany Schmidt. Schmidt. Okay, B. Schmidt. B. Schmidt. Or Brittany Brunkowski. Oh. B. Schmidt. What? Oh. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What's a, um, give me a whole night. Run down a whole night. Give me all your whole activities during the day, knowing that at night you'll be doing some whole shit. Hmm. Give me a whole uh, a rundown. Well, shaving. Give it to me, yeah. always from the, from the time you start, because when you wake up, you know you're gonna be hoeing at night. Yeah, yeah. Run it down to me. Give me the layout. I mean, the layout. Sleep. sleep. Oh, I always got to sleep. You gotta always sleep. Got to sleep. Always got to, got to sleep. sleep. Um, <laughs> really not shit until you start drinking and then getting ready and then hoeing. It's pretty direct. Ho sound like hoes ain't got no jobs. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay, because I ain't hear well, nothing I about. I didn't <laughs> I sound like I during the day because like you said I'm sleeping. I was in college when I was hoeing the most. Okay, so okay. So it was like college, like okay. fucking going to classes. Sometimes. Keep going with the whole agenda, though. Yeah, the whole agenda. Um, no, whole agenda. Oh, the whole agenda. <laughs> yeah, the whole agenda. <laughs> From during the day up into the night. I mean, well, waking up, you gotta, hoes gotta eat a good, nutritious breakfast, sunny side up or, you know, egg or whatnot, a little English muffin. Mm. And um, yeah, you need the carbs because you, you got a carbo load for the club because you can't just like be dropping it down on an empty stomach. I would go sit in the sauna. Yeah. And sweat out. Well, that's you know. some like VIP ho shit. Where'd, where'd you get a yeah. sauna? Where'd you get a pass for that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's at, the sauna? At 24 at? hour fitness. <laughs> no, let me say something. Let me share. Um, I got a whole story for y'all. Um, it's a Vegas door. Hmm. Bah, 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 bah. So here we go, people. I'm in Vegas <laughs> and I'm running my VIP company. If you, won't, if you don't believe me, you can Google it. VIP company, the name is All In VIP. And I was doing my thing. I was servicing the community. They needed me. They had nobody like that out, me, like that out there and they needed me. How I got the gig was I was a blackjack dealer. So I was dealing to these high limit players and they was like, D, how do you know all these waitresses? And I was like, oh man, I just kind of, I'm friendly with everybody. And he was like, hey man, you know, what do you hang out and party? They would want to party with me. So I said, well, damn, let me just, you know, see if I can make some money off of it. So what I would do was, I would get, let's say, you playing at my table, right? Mm -hmm. You, your husband, mm. Mr. Schmidt, mm -hmm. Mr. comes, Rick, and, yeah. yeah, he comes to my table and he's playing and he's Hilarious. a pretty big player. Meaning he's playing at least about 500 to 1,000 a hand and he's looking for somewhere to party. He would talk to me and, or I, once I get comfortable, I would say, hey, listen, where you partying at the night? He was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know where to go. I said, well, how many people with you? I got seven people with me. You know what? Well, I can set you up a table over at uh, Tao. So what I would do is I go to Tao, and I was like, hey, Tao, I need to get a table for the night. I was like, all right, cool. Give me the table. How much is the table? The table's going to be $1,000. All right, what's the $1,000 include? You're going to get two bottles, uh, sparkler bitches, and yeah, that's it. So I'm like, all right, cool, bet. I would say, go back to the player, Mr. Schmidt. Say, hey, Mr. Schmidt. Got you set up over here at Tile. It's gonna be a crazy night. It is gonna be wild. It's gonna be people that's flying in. It's fight night. It's a big party. Now here's the problem, Mr. Schmidt. That table is expensive and they don't have any more like it. Well, how much is the table? I'm glad you asked. That table's seven thousand dollars. What? That is a seven thousand dollar table, Mr. Schmidt. That's what they're charging. So what do I do? Bam, I take my six thousand, mm, pay my thousand, bam for the table that he's gonna get, because once I get there, I make my payment, I walk the party in, bam, I made my money. So that's how I'm running my operation. Now in the midst of this, they're like, some guys is like, hey man, I wanna get a girl that's gonna be fucking. I wanna hope. Mm. Well, I started finding out who the hoes were, because you see them every night. I worked the, uh, the graveyard shift, mm -hmm. 4 a.m. in the noon. That's 4 a.m. When people get out of the club, they get out of the club at four, we in Vegas. Where they coming? Straight to the blackjack table. I'm right there talking shit. Come on down. So the hoes is recognized like, this dude is pretty cool. Now the hoes got pimps, so they don't really want to deal with nobody that's trying to do no extra shit, but they different with d -Lay because I got all the clientele. I got all these big ballers. All these players that want to play $20,000 a night. Uh, uh, I just got some t top tier players. Were you lucky? You gave them the, the cards. You gave it to them? Or? It had nothing to do with that. I was providing an experience. Okay. They never had a blackjack dealer like me. Okay. I had the highest payout percentage out of all the dealers in Las Vegas. 
That's what I told them. That was my, I was spill. I was spill that to them every time. So people were just comfortable with me. So they were like, man, fuck it. If he just, we should party with this nigga. So I'm getting involved with the hoes now. So I tell a girl, hey, listen, my man over there's a big timer. And he need a date for the night. Uh, what you trying to do, be a pimp? I'm not a pimp. I'm just facilitating this operation. Now, I'm sure you want about a thousand. Yes, I want a thousand. Okay, cool. Now, this is where I was going to go. <laughs> Whatever I set up, I just want half. Half? You gonna act like a pimp. Wait, first of all, you had nothing. <laughs> you, this didn't even exist. Okay. So, I think half is fair. I'm not going to beat your ass. I consider us actually partners. Bam. It worked. The girls start talking. He need to fuck a delay. He getting his money. So now, my table, my blackjack table, is full of hoes every night looking for work. <laughs> and my supervisor's like, why well, is all these hoes around your table? I said, like, I don't know. I just want to be entertained. I don't know. They work so hard, they want to be entertained. I don't know. This one girl named Diamond. I met Diamond when I was working at the Hilton. Diamond was absolutely stunning. She was black and Asian. Never met a Diamond that wasn't. Oh, she was stunning. She was black and Asian with long black hair, but she looked black. But you could see the Asian in it. You know what I mean? You, you have the black favor more out of her Asian. And she, her, she was beautiful. First saw her at the Hilton. I was like, hey, how you doing? Nothing. Head down, walking. I ain't talking. I was like, oh, she got a pimp, pimp. She ain't even, she ain't addressing my fucking workers in the casino. One day she came to my table with a dude who was trying to pick up on her. And we started having a little dialogue. I'm talking about shit, so she started laughing. Afterwards, she got comfortable. Started talking to me. So every now she come in, she talking to me. Cut two, I transferred to the wind. I'm dealing at the wind now, that's the big dog. Started at Main Street Station, the lowest casino, worked my way to the Hilton, Hilton all the way to the wind. So I'm now dealing in the upper echelon of dealers. I am in this bitch with all the money, all the hoes, and delays in the midst of it. I'm finna get some of this money, a lot of it. Diamond, I, I, don't, I haven't seen Diamond in like a year or so, because hoes fall off. Y'all be just dipping off to me. Where the hell went? I don't know. Hoes be disappearing. So I don't see it for like a year or so. Hoes be disappearing. Y'all be getting up out of here. I don't know where y'all go, where y'all where y'all take y'all whole vacations. Y'all hoes yeah. be falling off. And then y'all be like, oh, I'm back, nigga. I see Diamond in there, and I'm like, I haven't seen Diamond in a minute. And I'm like, Diamond, she was like, hey. She gained a little weight, but it still wasn't bad. She was still looking good. You could see she was getting a little older. She says, I've been looking after for you. After one year? After one year? After, yeah, <laughs> hoeing is hard. Yeah, after a year. Yeah. Hoeing is hard. It is a hard, let me tell you something. When we come back from this break, I'm gonna go deeper into hoeism. Oh, did you miss me? We'll be right back. <laughs> hey man, listen. This is Did You Miss Me? And I miss y'all over at Patreon. That's why I miss you, because some of y'all haven't subscribed yet. Some of you still in the $2 tier, and shame on you. <laughs> because you've been watching long enough and you got your money up. We gave you a couple of weeks to get your money up and get back in the game. We, we don't shame you. the $2. We don't shame them, we just think you can do better. I think that's motivational. I'm encouraging I believe in you. Hey, $2 subscriber, I believe in you. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. We just got out of Black History Month, wherever we're at in the month or in the year. <laughs> your finances on up and up. Now the economy is doing, not to get into politics, either way, I think the economy is doing us a favor right now. So go ahead and take advantage and get these stories exclusively on Patreon. $20 subscribers, we're yet. Believe in us, we believe in you. I was talking to you about Diamond. Okay. Man, this hit me. Diamond, I run into her again at the win, and I hadn't seen her in a while. She was older. She was a little fatter. She was a little, she not fatter. Like, I don't want to call her fat. She looked good. She looked good. You know what I mean? She yeah. she she straight. She ain't ain't nobody mad at her. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody mad at her. Mm -hmm. Because she was she was she was slim fine. Okay. And then she just she got a little thick. She's still fine. Mm -hmm. She still she's still getting fifteen hundred dollars niggas mm -hmm. per dick. 
or jack off. Time it was cold. Mm. What? I had to sit down with her one day. I asked her, I said, man, listen, what is, you know, what is it, you know, like doing? She was like, she hated her pimp. She hated him. No, and because she didn't talk to any other men but me, because her pimp wouldn't let her talk to men. So she hated him. So I was her like relief. But she could smile and feel good for the minute and go suck some dick and then come back again. <laughs> I was her help. I was really like her relief. <laughs> Diamond told me that she had a quota a night. She had to make 5000 a night. And I said, like, well, how much you charging? She was like, I'm charging $1,000. i am like, damn. Fight night. She was like, I get anywhere from five to ten thousand. She's selling pussy, pussy. What? I know she wishes she selling. had another pussy to sell. She's in there, but she ain't tripping. That's just like five thousand a night. You ain't finna be in there getting dug out by no goddamn Brian Pumper. These days finna pop off quick and they out of there. These ain't no real dicksmen. These are regular guys. These are businessmen, tech guys. They nothing fast. <laughs> Three to five minutes. That's what tech niggas nut. <laughs> So she was, I was like, God damn. I'm thinking like, actually that's a pretty, that's a, that's a quick turnover. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't know the stress and the struggle she gotta go through. So she says, I'm ready to leave him. And I was like, oh damn. You ready to get out of there? She was like, yeah. I was like, damn. She said, I'm gonna give myself about one more month and I'm out of there. And she kept telling me, I, was, I would ask her each day, what you made? Said, I made 6000 I made 8000 So I was listening to all these totals. And I started thinking, I want some of that money. <laughs> I want some of that money. How much was she giving the pimp? All of it. That's how much pimps get? A hundred percent. You could tell I ain't a candidate for pimping. So just a a hundred. What? All of it. Bring it all to the table. So I said, I want some of that money. And I'm gonna get some of that money. I am gonna get some of that money. I called her up one day, late. Late is early, meaning like 11 o'clock in, in the morning. That's, you can't call her, that's late. She sleep at that hour. Cause she hold during the night. She answered the phone, hello. I said, I need you. T. Yes, I need you. What's wrong? I'm in a bind. I'm in a bind, and I got a family crisis, and I need you. She was like, okay, listen, I can't talk now, he's here. I'll see you at work, cool. Hang the phone, get to work. She waiting at work for me. What happened? What's wrong? What's wrong? It's my cousin. Who? My cousin from Louisiana. He's deaf. What happened? Oh, a grenade exploded. His head was right by it. Are you serious? Yes. He gotta have surgery. In order to hear again, it's gonna take $15,000. $15,000? Yes. You gotta hit it this time, my nigga. That's just how they're going to be in the career until watching. I asked the girl for $15,000. My cousin did just go deaf, but it wasn't from a grenade. I made that shit up. I was about to say you old Forrest Gump story. She gave me 5000 She gave me 5000 And I was like, I got to look out for this girl forever. So she told me, I'm thinking about leaving her. A month, I'm a stack, and I'm out of there. I'm at home one night. I'm married. I got two children, Jojo and Caleb. <coughs> I'm laying in the bed with their mama, who is my wife. <coughs> it's 4.30. My phone ring. I'm off. I'm not at work. I'm off. My phone ring. I'm like, who the fuck? It's my ringer on. It ain't no vibrate, it ring, ring. I said, oh shit. My wife get it, look up, and she was like, Diamond calling you. And I was like, now my wife knew that I was getting money with the different girls, uh -huh. so she wasn't like tripping like that. Answer the phone, she was like, oh my gosh, you gotta meet me right now. 
I'm like, oh shit, what happened? Meet me at Red Rock Casino. I'm like, all right, cool. With the phone, I was like, something just happened with, you know, one of the girls, I gotta get out. She ain't tripping, she know what it is. I'm not fucking these girls. I'm just getting money with them. It ain't no, I'm fucking right. these girls, I'm getting money. Mm -hmm. I go over to Red Rock. She pulls up in like a, I can't, it was a, it was a, it was a SUV. And she was like, I'm leaving him tonight. It's over. And I was like, God. So she's like, I got it. I got all my money saved up. I was like, how much you got? She's like, I got 40000 saved. I was like, oh, okay. That's what's up. That's a nice question. She said, she said, yeah, and I want you to be my daddy. Why? Wait. You want me to be the pimp? Ooh. I'm like, I got a whole goddamn family. I can't do this. I can't have a family and pimp. I gotta do one or the other. I said, nah, I, I said, cause I'm thinking like, man, I know she's gonna hand that 40,000 over to me. I know it. I know she gonna give me that 40. Yeah. She's that dumb? No, I'm her security. That's dumb as hell. You think I'm a, okay. Off of my pussy, nigga? Y'all don't understand the mind frame. Uh -uh. Ain't no mind there, clearly. So I'm like, I can't do it. She breaks down crying. Cause now she trusts me. She, them hoes don't trust me. Hoes don't be trusting. She said, please, please. She's begging me. I'm like, I can't move like this. Cause I can't take this back to my wife. I'm do already doing some wild shit with this. Now I'm a fucking pimp. No, <laughs> can't do it. She got out of my car. I never seen her again. I never seen her again. Don't know where the fuck Diamond at. Hopefully she kept her 40 grand. Diamond, if you're out there, give us a call. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. I hope you still got that 40 grand. I'll get over there to you. Hey man, never knew you had that hoe in you. Never knew you had it in you. Dallas. Oh, goddamn. First of all, Dallas was really fun. These niggas have fans from all over. I was, I host, I'm hosting their show in select cities or whatever, um, which is really fun because they do need a female perspective. And yeah. Luckily, <laughs> you know, they do. <laughs> Which, what's funny about that? No, it's true. I agree. I agree. Because it's all male dominated. And to have a female up top. Yeah, I like it. I like the mix of it. Yes. So. You're coming to the next city. I'm coming to the next two cities. It's anyway, done. So these niggas, I looked at in the audience. And they have this cult following. It was hoes driving in from Alabama, Mississippi. Mm. They were driving in. And half the audience had these t-shirts on. They were not selling no merch. Which means niggas was ordering t-shirts. The Did You Miss Me t-shirt. North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina. Yeah. Bitches was like out there like, oh my God. Oh, California. California. Some people flew from California. People flew from California. I'm like, y'all can't just see this nigga in California. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was just something about the podcast because that's just the reach that y'all have. But I don't be out in LA like that. Like I don't even tell oh, people what I'm yeah. going to come. I'm going to a club tonight. Sliding up into the Ha Ha Cafe, bam. Give me that 20 minute set in, I'm out of there. Yeah. So I just like to be in that thing, out there. Yeah, they was in you, it. You were with Bill Bellamy this weekend, right? That's right. Yeah, I saw that on your Instagram. Anyway, so, um, we, uh, first of all, before, before we continue, can I just, we did our first viral video together, right? Man, we, d yes. So why the fuck did you unfollow me from Instagram, my nigga? I did not. <laughs> no, no, listen. <laughs> And there's some fans out there that feel like that. I promise you. Who did it? I don't. It's like 500 people got unfollowed. Because checks and balances. I hate when niggas act like this. There's checks I and balances you, with Instagram, my nigga. They ask you like four times. Do you really want to unfollow this motherfucker? I don't Do be. You really? I don't be un. I something happens in the algorithms. Yeah, Hollywood niggas get Hollywood. No. It does happen with large accounts. I promise you. They follow and unfollow. It's just unfollow. It does. Yeah. It just... See, like, you gotta follow me back, fool. 
Listen, the people want to know that you follow me. I've unfollowed my sister, and she hit me, and I was like, they can do it now, I would Dice. never unfollow. Oh, your sister. They can do it now, Dice. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. Do it on the show right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he's gonna do it on the show right now. That's what they said. While I'm finishing this story. Go so ahead. Anyway, we back to Dallas. Okay. <laughs> so I'm from Dallas, right? So I have places to stay, like at my mama's house. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which she thought y'all were going to come by and stay because she got two hot this tubs. This is after the show, before she the show. She got a hot tub on each side of the pool. Your mama got a hot tub? Two hot tubs. Your okay. mama got two hot tubs? Two hot tubs. And I told y'all, we, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. Your mama got two hot tubs, though. She does. Okay. Where you be at? In one of them. Okay. So there's another one that's free. I like Go the ahead. one on the left. Okay. okay. So anyway... We are in Dallas, my hometown. I don't really want to stay at the Airbnb, uh, Airbnb that they have, even though they got a chef, like I told y'all before, that came and made like pescatarian type food. There he go. He followed me, y'all. <laughs> I'm a pescatarian, which means I only eat fish. The chef has salmon, had yes. all kind of good shit, like Bunch a of lot shit. of food, yeah. right? So the night after one of the shows, I'm like, I'm telling Billy, I'm like, no, I'm gonna go home. He's like, That's no, right. you're not going home. I said, yes, the fuck I am. Long story short, he ends up taking my cousin, who's drunk as fuck, to the party. And he calls me. He's like, well, you got to come to the party now because I got your cousin. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean you got my cousin? Then Courtney's in the background like, oh, we got your cousin. You're coming to the party. I'm like, what, bitch? Whatever. I get to the party. It's fun. Okay, fine. So then they're like, no, come on back. Come on back to the house. Why did I do that? Mm. Why did I do that? I walk in the house and I ate first because it was mm -hmm. great food and shit, right. right? Maybe what, like five minutes later, it's a caravan of hoes that pull up with suitcases and blow pops <laughs> and sunglasses at night, nigga, and red pleather pants, nigga, <laughs> and weave. Ha, <laughs> ha, damn. God damn! Wow! Damn! Hey, listen, this story has been in her head. Yeah. This motherfucker took a T. You even took me back. I see it. Me like, too. I was like, exactly what happened? Damn. I said, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Did I do something? Man, we might need to say this shit from Patreon. <laughs> Hold up, Dyson. No, for real. Cause okay. I don't know how. Don't go that I deep. Mean, I'm not gonna go that deep. I'm not going that deep. Not okay. Going that deep. I'm not going that deep. Because I wasn't there. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was passed out, so I don't really know. I do know that I was woken up the next morning by a fight. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was on the couch, because I don't know what went on upstairs, okay? I'm on the couch, knocked out, because I'm fucked up. It's me, you, and Ernest yeah. in the living room, yeah, the living knocked room. out, right? Yeah, I was on the couch, too, yeah. So I hear screaming. I, and I know it's Courtney, because I'm like, I know her voice. I've heard her cussing Billy out. We all know what she sounds like when she's cussing Billy out, mm -hmm. if, you, if you know them. Mm -hmm. And all I remember <laughs> was I walked up the stairs, and Billy, I, now I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm about to have to fuck this nigga up, because he up there beating my homegirl's ass, right? What the fuck? Mm -hmm. He walked out the room, blood, his nose is bloody as fuck. <laughs> Courtney looks like she's, a, she just like had changed into a superhero yeah. outfit. I said, you know what? Billy bleeding. Billy is bleeding. What, is he saying anything? Oh, damn. God damn, Courtney. This, this bitch, she, she hit me. She, I'm like, oh my God. And she, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. I, don't, I mean, I'm assuming they're fighting over a girl or like, oh, I don't know. Who knows what the fuck? Or who, what they be fighting over? They be fighting over anything. Everything. Anything. It ain't they no one thing. They belong together. Now, I, I just want to say up until the... Me, so that night, me and Courtney were getting really fucked up because they only y'all told the club to give y'all Apple Jack. Yeah, or Billy did that. Apple Crown. Apple Royal, Crown. Billy which did is that. Gross. Yeah, Billy did that. So Apple I sent my brother to the liquor store. That. Yeah, Billy did that it was shit. So gross. Billow, you did that, Billow. I, I sent my brother to the liquor store to get some tequila. Mm -hmm. So me and Courtney was full of that tequila. We were we were handing the bottle back and forth like this, like playing the game. Where y'all at? Y'all in the green room? We was in the while green room. While we on stage? Yeah, talking, calling, talking about my family and shit. Um, we we right. tearing your family ass out the frame. <sighs> we are ripping George Washington Carver a brand new <laughs> peanut ass. We are taking his ass piece by piece apart. <gasps> ha, I still see his face. He was having a good time. He was having a good time. So, 
You see B- Billy got the blood coming from Billy his nose. Billy got the blood coming from his nose. And I realized that I have my dad's forerunner and I have like 15 missed calls on my phone. So I'm like, oh, shit, I got to go anyway. So I left. Come to the show. I'm backstage. I'm like, where's Courtney at? They And where's Bill? Where's everybody? Like, the show is starting in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, the oh, club is, is asking me this is where the fuck y'all are at. Yeah, this is Sunday. So Billy pulls up. <laughs> His nose is clean now, but you know how Billy, when he has this like, when he his when he's nose mad, is clean now. <laughs> when he's mad, he just has this attitude, and it's just like the saddest, like, whatever. And and then whenever they get into it, also he wears the wedding rings around his on a necklace, you yeah. know. So he had the wedding you rings on. She she, she gets she takes off. the ring. She done took her rings off, and he got them on the necklace and shit. Dice, I can't do this shit no more, man. I can't. I mean, and and the thing about Billy is. Up, they were calling to the stage, and he was so fucked up, I and know. went up there and ripped it for thirty minutes, I just like he Billy. did after his dad passed. I slapped I, Billy that night. Were you at that show with the improv he did? Yeah. I was like, oh my god! Like tragedy brings the funniest shit out. We of this were doing thing. a showcase that night for um for this tour that we were doing, and we didn't know if Billy was going to show up, and Billy came through yeah. that bitch, and because I was like, what are you going to talk about tonight? Because they had like certain topics they wanted certain mm-hmm. people to talk about. And I was like, I'm going to talk about what the fuck I want to talk about. And Billy went up and crushed with that set. Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, 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 know what it, you wouldn't I know he was going through that night. I was in the green room when we were going through that night. But I just want to say that, you know, Billy has made me want to knock his ass out a couple of times. <laughs> so I was not mad. At the fact that she had busted that nigga's nose, and I thought it was really funny. But you didn't and know. And he what... didn't hit her back. Nah, he couldn't. Yeah. She hit him first. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> Courtney is, Courtney is crazy as hell. Courtney is just like y'all niggas. I did not know how crazy Courtney was. I didn't know she was just like the best wingman ever. Like. Man, listen. That bitch is. Courtney called me two days ago at six in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. It's 8 o'clock. She in Houston. Answer the phone. Bro. Bro. I'm going to the airport, and I'm beating the fuck out of Billy. (laughs) This just happened. This just happened two days ago. This just happened two days ago. She said, I said, I'm asleep. I said, hold on, what happened? No, you don't have anything to do with it. This fucking damn fool and fucking lying ass Billy. And I was like, what happened? I'll call you back. I was like, all right. She hang up the phone. Billy called me. I'm like, oh, fuck. Now you in it. Billy. I'm in it now. <laughs> Billy. That's your day. Courtney say she about to beat your ass. Mm, I'm just landing. I'm in Houston. I'm good. I said, all right. Not a problem. Get off the phone. I called Courtney back. She got the kids in the back. I said, Courtney, sit down. I said, oh, shit. She, she hollering at the kids. She on one already. I said, Courtney, what are you about to do? Beat the fuck out of lying ass Billy. I'll call you back. Click. <laughs> Man. I said, I don't know how this shit going to turn out. I ain't even talked to Billy since. But I know, I absolutely know that's a story coming on that end. Courtney is crazy. Play zero games with her. Zero. I don't. Zero. But you know what? When I thought she was a pushover a little bit at one point because she saw me and Billy get into it so bad at this coffee shop one day. And I was we were in Koreatown and it was one of them coffee shops where you don't they don't speak any English in there, right? So it's just Koreans on computers, you know, like they'll sit right next to each other. Four of them didn't even know each other at the same table. Right. And shit. And I cussed him out. And I know she was sitting there like she was so interested and she just wanted more. And Didn't I was, budge and it, it was windows all over the place, and so I walked out, and I was still cussing this motherfucker out outside, like through the window and shit. And everybody, all the Koreans, was in there, like, and she was just like, "Yeah, yeah, she's poised." With her. I knew she was cool as shit. She poised with a. She let me cuss her husband out. Yeah, and which she, means he's full of shit. She felt he needed it. Yeah, she felt he she needed felt it. Because she knew he was wrong, probably. She, she, yeah. <laughs> she knew. Well, I've been knowing Billy 20 years, though. Mm-hmm. We worked together at Joe's Crab Shack. And, um, really? By, by the Astrodome. The Astrodome, it's not even there no more. The name of Travis Scott's album is the Astrodome. It's Astrodome. You and Billy worked at Joe's Crab Shack. Yes, and we used to get fucked up in the parking lot together before work. 
we would kill like a whole six pack of beers in like 10 minutes and then go in there and Y'all were terrible employees. We were terrible. We were fucked up. Y'all were terrible. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I would have been the third nigga. Yeah, you would have. I would have been drinking that shit with y'all too. Because I just didn't have nobody to get crazy with. You know AC? AC was the other person. AC? Uh Mm Uh-huh. He was the other one. that we. It was us three that worked there together at Joe's Crab Shack. And we used to get... You weren't doing comedy at this time. No, no, no. We were like 20 or something. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 18 to, comedy, to 35 right? right now, so yeah, we I'm was like... I'm 18 to 35. <laughs> yeah. She just application talked, y'all. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> application. Did you enjoy Dallas, though? I, I enjoyed Dallas so much. I'll never forget that night, first of all. D-Late, <laughs> you are a motherfucking fool. And that's just... All of y'all are some... I, some just goddamn fools. What do you mean, delay? Because they they want to know. What do you mean, delay? You a motherfucker. <laughs> what do you mean when you say that? I mean, you know how to have a good time, and y'all do. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I can go to every city with y'all. We turn up. We fucking party. I need a room. I mean, they did have a nice Airbnb. We all had. And that our was own nice. Space. And it was we super asked nice. her from the night one. She was like, I'm going to come out. Because I remember you said you was coming out. And then something happened with your brother. He got drunk or something. Something. And she didn't come out. (laughs) (laughs) She wasn't ready to put that on the podcast. My little brother. What happened with your brother? Wait. What happened with your brother? I'll just say him and damn fool ended up hooking up and going somewhere to get some shit. Nah. That's the kind of nigga What happened with your brother? (laughs) What happened with your damn brother? My brother got kicked out of the improv that night. Oh shit. My brother is a fool. I've been kicked out of better places <laughs> by better people. <laughs> and he's real gay and just crazy as fuck. I had to so you know He I'm, got kicked out the improv he got kicked tonight. Out the improv. Oh, yeah, and told the bitch, I've been kicked out of better places. By better people. Good day. That's what he says. He'd be like, Good day. I didn't know he got niggas, kicked out of this. He got kicked What out. happened? He got drunk. He was drunk as fuck, buying everybody shots of Jameson, you know? Yeah. Like, he thinks he's Irish or some shit when he gets, I don't know. He? He was fucked up. He got kicked out. Luckily, my mom was already gone. Yeah. D-Lay tried to fuck my aunt, too. Mm-hmm. I have the Instagram videos to prove it. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not denying anything. Yeah, see. I was in full D-Lay mode. It was probably after the show. And then Billy's, Billy's daughter's teacher was at the uh, yes. show. She came up to me, and she was like, she was like, I teach, um, everybody knows Blair's name. Yep. I, I teach Blair, um, and she, sure did she was show. like, and Blair comes to school like, oh yeah, I'm going to meet, I met Snoop Dogg yesterday, and oh, I was, I was with such and such, <laughs> and she was like, I didn't believe her, but now I believe, she was like, now I kind of see what, I don't even think she knew that it was, you know, mm-hmm. she, but Billy right. looks just like Blair, like they look just alike, so I'm sure as soon as she saw him, and the last name, of course, Blair, yeah. that she, Blair yeah. keeps it all, Blair tell y'all the truth. All the truth. Even, even when you How much you want to hear? Because <laughs> she, she it got it on a pricer. All the truth. She's so cute. Hey, man, let me let me share this with you, and we're going um, to keep it moving. I took an Uber today. I declare. I'm not the Uber pool king. Y'all been inboxing me, mm. screenshotting me, sending them the receipts. Thought I was doing something. <laughs> I had three dollars and twenty-five. I thought I was doing. I humbly bow down to you, Uber Pool Kings, because this is a nigga that showed me a dollar. He cheap said, "Delay, bow down." Screenshot. His shit was like a dollar and change. Cause now niggas, I got niggas competing for who can get the cheapest Uber Pool. I thought three dollars was a motherfucking golden ticket. Anyway, that's that. Wow. So I get an Uber Pool today. To start my day, I've got a table read and I got to pick up merchandise. I'm working on uh, D-Lay Enterprise time, so I'm maneuvering how I need to maneuver. Everything's revolving around me, how I prefer it to be. You know what I mean? That's a very dynamic situation. So as I'm moseying down to my Uber, I get in and I'm not concerned about winning. I'm, I'm just chilling. I got my headphones on. I'm listening to some Nipsey Hustle. I'm vibing. R.I.P. My lady, yep, R.I.P. Nipsey. 
my Uber driver is a lady by the name of Gloria. Gloria don't speak English that good, but I don't really care because I ain't got to talk to you. I got my don't fuck with me's on. The don't fuck with me's on the bows, noise cancellation. We ride down the street. I'm on, I'm on YouTube. I think I was looking at something on CNN. Billy calls me. Billy, me and Billy chopping it up. We're talking on the phone. Hey man, what you doing? You podcast, you know, you and Dicey gonna link up at yep, four o'clock, cool. So we're talking. Me and Billy on the phone probably about 15 minutes. So Billy says, hey man, let's call Simo. I was like, all right, cool, let's call Simo. Let's talk some business while we're on the phone. You know, you on your ride too. All right, cool. Get Simo on the phone. The Uber is going. I look up. We passing back by my building downtown where Gloria picked me up from. We've been riding for 20 minutes. We ain't left. I'm like, <laughs> I'm on the, I got the don't fuck with me zone. Simo's on the line. Billy's on the line. We talking business. I said, oh, hey. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> she was like, the, the guy, the guy in front is go to the right, and then I, I have to AC, and I go to the right, <laughs> and AC, uh, the GPS. I said, hey, man, what we doing? Billy, hey, man, hey, listen, hey, hey, Didi, hey, Didi, listen, hey, man, let, let, man, let that woman drive that car, man. Let the woman drive the car, man. Hey, man, listen, just, just listen in. Let the woman, hey, just, just ride, Didi, just ride. Simo, oh, you got one of them. <laughs> Simo been in this position before. Oh, you got one of them. We're riding. Now, we're probably into this ride now about 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. We're about 40 minutes in. I'm going to a table read. I am clearly late for my table read. Text the producer, hey, you're running a little late. No worries. Cool. So she stops, picks up a passenger and his girlfriend. It's a guy and a girl. A guy gets in the front seat, girl gets in the back. Cute girl. Dude looks behind him. He looking like, this nigga look familiar. I ain't in that mode right now. I got a do-rag on. I got my don't fuck with me's on. I'm, I'm talking business with them, but I'm frustrated with Gloria. So as we ride down, I said, ma'am, I've been in the car with you for 53 minutes. What time you think you're gonna start getting towards anybody's destination? It's the car in front of me. It missed the exit. It said go to the right, and it said go not go to the right. And the uh, GPS it say uh, say say so it say nothing to me. Uh, I I know say. I said, hey man, I'm about to try to get. I'm about to cancel this Uber. I'm about to ask her to pull over, and I'm gonna get another Uber. Billow, hey man, come on man, hey man, just sit back, Didi. Sit back, Didi, just ride. Just ride, man. Just ride up. Just listen, listen. Just ride, man. Hey, man. Let the lady do a job. All right, cool. Finally, drop off the couple. Dude looked in the back. He was like, "Yeah, I'm delay. Just not right now. I'm not trying to be rude. You see what I'm going with? Girl in the back seat dying laughing, cause this motherfucker keep missing. She keep getting off on exits. Gloria's just getting off on exits." It's just a, she, she just get off. And every time she get off, I'm like, man, I'm listening to Simo and Billy talk business. I'm like, man, motherfucker. Oh, girl, I see her with a phone. She got a phone. I want to say, bitch, stop feeling. I can't say that because I'm, I'm emotional right now. She's filming you? Yeah, she's filming. People always film you when you're emotional. I'm hot. Gloria ran me hot. We dropped a couple off. So she finally drops me off. An hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> An hour and 30 <laughs> minutes later. I am an hour late. I try to leave early for the table read. I'm an hour late for my table read. Producer's like, hey man, not a problem, man. That's, that's cool, everything's good. Go to the table read, read through everything. Beautiful table read, TV show, on the way. Oh, d -Lang. You goddamn right. I'm doing big shit. I told y'all, 2019, I'm making you motherfuckers take it in. Take it all the way in. So, it goes great. Bam. Call me an Uber. I said, you know what? I got a goddamn TV show coming. I'm a splurge. I want the Uber SUV. <laughs> Let me just ball out for a minute. 
Let me just live my life like it's golden. Let me ball out. Damn. Send me to Uber SUVs. Three to four minutes. Ain't no eight minute waits. Hey, nigga, you paying big. We at your shit. We op we getting out this bitch. We opening it for you. This ain't no regular shit. Nigga, I'm gonna pick you up and have a suit on. Look respectable. Look, he's supposed to be like he for you. Like you hired that nigga. You got a slave. That is your slave. You if you wanted to. That is a. That's too strong. But you got your own personal attendant. I'm just reflecting. I'm like, man, this has been a good year so far. Everything's going good. Bam. Uber pull. Uber um, pulls up. Hops out the car. I'm feeling good, man. I, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just feeling good about life. You know what I mean? I'm doing big shit. I got an Uber SUV. I'm living my life. Driver comes around. I look up. It's Gloria. The bitch from the Uber pool. She looked me dead in my eyes and she said, Did you miss me? God damn, we took you around the world and dropped your ass off. And Dicey, you landed that bitch. God damn it. I'm talking about, man. This is Did You Miss Me? I'm Delay. I'm Dicey. Thank hey, you man, for having me. Hey, man. Thank y'all for watching. Keep on watching. We got more shit for y'all. Patreon, go over there. We got some shit on the way. It's in route.